It's a quarter past 10 o'clock and it's just in time for Press Pass. And this is what's coming up on this August 13th episode. Breaking down the story on demolitions in the city, how this story is being told and what more there is to tell. They use, they use hidden identities. The riparian people. Has the media done enough to explain the context and even the meaning of riparian land? For no reason at all. They told me so, to pick your research. So I, I wonder that I'm doing my job. Why should they shoot me? What, the, what, the, what one know. journalist had to go through to deliver a story on demolitions in Buruburu. <laughs> quite excited about this episode tonight. We have quite the panel and uh, really appreciate them coming on time. you meet them in a moment. First, let's start with your views on this uh, particular topic of the day. Our correspondents asked a handful of people from different counties what they feel uh, is the meaning or what they understand as the issue called riparian. It has been in the headlines, has been in the news, TV, radio and whatnot. So what their understanding is of this and what they feel the media has been doing in covering these stories on demolition. Listen in. The riparian, they just come, you cannot trace them, you don't know who they are, but they are the owners of those properties. The riparian land means that interface or that area between the river and the land. Ubomoji wa nyumba barabarani, sio kumba ni puloti ilikuja jana. Na mipaka na beacons ziliwekwa toka zamani, ambazo watu wana ignore, you can see the hand of the government is now stretched to those big big fish. Okay, inafanya vizuri, but uh, inafanya kwa kufanya ubaguzi. Kuna mahali unasikia sehemu zinabomolewa na kuna mahali unasikia watu wanaachiliwa. Sasa siju wale wenye kuachiliwa buildings zao ni watu ambao ni ndio serikali ama ni watu wananchi. Media pia is tuonesha na Rome peke yake. Yoneshe pia other cities. Apa, 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 all over Kenya. Tumeshanga ama tumekuja pata kuwa, eh, kumbe wanaiji wanasidi kuelekea mali ambaye istahili, istahili kujengo wa manyuma, ambapo hii, hii wanabari, wametufafanu wame ama wametusaidia, kuona kuwa istahili kujenga mali, ta, ta, tafuta stagabati, ambaye na istahili uwe nazo, ili upate ruhusa ya kujenga mali na istahili. Kuna wale watu wa waelewi, so nilikuwa naomba kama if they can uh, if they can give uh, more time eh, to explain so that by the time mtu anakubali kubomolewa nyumba ama any building atakuwa amelewa they didn't go deep because like for sure we only saw the, the, like on social media it is social media which is really covered not the ministry media they just wake up one day na waambiwe you vacate hata kama you notice they know because okay na wezi kali kwa field wezi jua kuna mahali mpaka inafika ama itafika baada 5 years tena utafikia hiyo land imeuzwa serikali nyingine ikija so kitu muhimu kwanza ni zile title kwanza zishikwe na huyu mwenyewe ambaye alikuwa approve washikwe kwanza ndio zianze kubomolewa kitu pia mpango ya kutosha ya tisa hame na pia kupewa noti kwa kama kuna mchezo ujie ile tena chini those are your views, and I'm sure there's more that you can write in via the hashtag PressPass as you weigh in on this matter. There's something that has been followed through this past week, especially when it picked up. Uh, although the demolitions did start, uh, and this was in Kibra over two weeks ago, and that's something else we'll also compare and contrast with my panel tonight, and that is Constant Cap. And I want you, uh, gentlemen and lady, to respond to what you've heard there from the uh, Vox Pops around the country. So, Constant Cap is an urban planner, and next to him is Dr. Lawrence Esho. He is the chairman of the Kenya Institute of Planners. And next to him is uh, Emma uh, Miloyo. She is the 
president of the Architectural Association of Kenya. And next to her is Vincent Ngede, who has been a colleague here at the Nation uh, Media Group as a journalist at a Daily Nation, but now is the editor for uh, Kenya, of course, the deputy editor for Africa Check that does fact-checking on various matters, something we'll be engaging you on in the days to come. So as you've heard the responses there, what do you feel? Uh, have you done a good uh, job at explaining? You might laugh at that gentleman who said, you know, these, uh, this riparian person, have we done a good job in explaining this or have we taken it for granted? Um, I think, okay, the media have done a good job in reporting the, the incidences and we've seen um, from live coverage of uh, a, a number of the demolitions right from the time we started with the road reserve in uh, Kibera to the point where um, we started the the riparian areas started being getting getting demolished. There is the aspect of the educative part of it that is necessary. Okay. Which, which we've we've had we've seen some attempts at it, but we've not seen a very clear, proper explanation coming out, uh, educative aspect coming out, so that people really understand why. Uh, and, and let's say so that the common person down there, um, not necessarily the professional, may understand precisely why we have to. Uh, preserve these particular riparian lands because um, we we've been very weak in application of policy the, uh, as as a nation and and people it's got to a point where people just think that oh no it's a jungle you know so there has to be that also my my perspective that as educative aspect yes and let's hope this panel discussion will be educative uh, Dr Lawrence from what you've heard from the Kenyans on the ground different counties yeah I, I think um, there's a lot of misunderstanding as to what uh, riparian areas are. And I think that uh, indicates a bigger problem, which is a lot of misunderstanding about planning okay. and uh, lack of awareness as to what plan, uh, is contained in plants. Okay. Riparian areas are creatures of plants. And, and generally, a plan is a well thought out um, document which assists us to deal with uh, various issues. For instance, in this case of riparian, we're dealing with environmental and climate issues. And therefore, when we designate an area as riparian, the aim is to make sure that um, we protect Kenyans okay. in the case of floods and things like that. We've seen it uh, over time when there are floods in this country that Kenyans end up being on the receiving end. And that's not because of a fault of their own, but a fault of people who are built on a riparian area and then people unsuspecting uh, Kenyans are sold properties on those areas. Okay. And then they only get to know that is an issue when there is a flood. All right. So I think there is need to educate uh, Kenyans in general about why, uh, about environmental issues to start with and about climate change because this is, we've seen a lot of flooding in the recent past. Oh, Donald was Trump might before. have uh, an issue with you talking about uh, oh, climate yeah, yeah, change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. Just initial reactions to you, Emma, in uh, what you've heard from the ground. Yes. Um, uh, for the fact, uh, the word riparian has been a buzz in the last week. Everyone has heard of the word riparian. Yes. What it means is another question. And I think the media has not brought that out quite well. We've talked about it. We've, sh we've shown the demolitions. But in just investigative pieces, feature stories that describe further and explain uh, a lot more of the importance of it. I think the media could have done more rather than yes. just showing the bulldozers the green monster. <laughs> Those are good uh, pictures yeah, to show. I mean, yeah. uh, it's, it's good TV for us. And, and I'm sure even when you capture that for the yeah, papers or yeah, online, yeah. great pictures. But Vincent might uh, say, might object to that in terms of the work that has been done over time. It's probably not had, uh, not received as much attention since it hasn't come with the wave that this current demolition uh, mm -hmm. campaign has come with. But you've been doing this uh, over the years. Yeah, um, uh, before when I when I was here at the Daily Nation, one of the things I used to do, I used to write urban planning stories. Um, and uh, I, I think that what this shows is that more than ever we need reporters inside City Hall. Uh, we need people who are not just telling us what um, our government officials are saying, mm -hmm. but we need we need journalists in the planning department. Independent uh, work uh, and, yeah. and not just waiting to get the information from these authorities and uh, perhaps even the president I mean, a, a and what lot he of said. Times, a lot of times, because this is also part of the, the bigger crisis that, is, that, is, that media has to face, that uh, one of the areas that is struggling is local journalism that often doesn't bring the big political stories that we want. There's a lot of humdrum, everyday, boring stories, 
but those those stories are, are the ones that keep watch on what happens at City Hall. Yes. But they don't generate a lot of buzz every day. So because the reason we are, why we are here is not because one big thing happened. It's because of very many developments, very many approvals, right? So approval after approval after approval, and on its own, none of those approvals was a big thing. But if there wasn't a journalist covering that one and that one, then we, we may not get the big picture. Some might say even the uh, a con contributing factor to this uh, great campaign is the uh, Nairobi Regeneration Committee that was formed early in the year. We'll see as to what has brought us to this particular position. But those are just the initial reactions. In terms of following up on stories on demolition, uh, there's one story that perhaps didn't get all that attention because the big green uh, bulldozers were not there. But this is one that uh, there was quite the challenge for one of our reporters. On Thursday last week, several residents of Njiro area, Nairobi County, were badly injured in violent clashes over a tract of land known as Buruburu Farm. And administration police officers deployed to quell the clashes destroyed uh, journalist uh, Catherine Nandasaba's camera as they tried to stop her from covering this particular story. But it didn't stop her. This is what she got, and this is her backstory. Gunshots were the order of the day on a piece of land dubbed Buruburu Farmers in Jiru, Nairobi County. Journalists who went out to cover the story were not left out of the clashes. Watch out, watch out. I turn the camera. Those groups of guys who are demonstrating against the demolitions, they called here. So it is when I was called to go and cover that event. There is a group of guys who are trying to demolish the Nini construction that was being constructed at the Buruburu farm. So there's another group that was trying to stop it. Administration police from Rai, D.C. So he was the one who came to st try to stop me to cover that event. So I just wondered why. I don't know the reason. Just He was just trying to stop me to cover that. Five to ten minutes. They grabbed my camera and broke it and then they told me to, they called another police officer, administration police officer, to come and take me, then they took my camera. Yeah, they grabbed me, pushed me to the ground and told me to stop through Nini, to, to sit there. At the in the in the ground on the ground. I turn a camera. I turn a camera. I am well. For no reason at all, they told me so. The police officers. So I, I wonder that I'm doing my job. Why should they shoot me? When they saw the media companies arrive, yeah, journalists arriving. Yeah. Yeah. That's when they stopped. And even they had to return my camera. That's when they called and they just disappeared. I just knew that I have to get this story. So that's why I stayed there until the story, everything was over. Yeah. That's when I had to send the story. Yeah. I've reported to the Mawembili police station. and I, They are given the OB number. I'm waiting for the feedback. The officer was not there in charge. They told me I was going to for another case at Milimani Court. They have just given me enough strength and courage to do this job. The journalism is a calling. So it's what I have to do. So I had to just to cover the story. Catherine and Asaba, we celebrate you. Yes, uh, there was some attempt to stop your work, but you continued and told the story. And this is something I believe will serve as an example for the rest in the profession. We will continue telling this story, but let's really look at candidly how we've told this uh, current wave of demolitions. And we'll start by setting the tone with what the president said yesterday by giving quite the heart to heart and revealing that he's lost uh, friends in the latest fight against impunity. And this is specifically with the latest demolitions that are ongoing within the city. Let's listen in. Over the last uh, few weeks, 
I've lost very many friends, Bishop. Um, because I've been receiving so many calls that you know, how can you just sit there and watch all this destruction going on? You must stop it. And I said, uh, well, it's difficult to stop. It's difficult to stop not because we love to destroy but because we must fight impunity. Not mincing his words here, and I'll start on that note. Uh, and we, anyone can jump in here. Should media be riding on this wave of, you know, chest thumping president and other leaders uh, within the county that they will demolish land that is on uh, constructions that is on public land and riparian land? Or are there questions to ask as to how the demolitions is being done? I'll start with you, Emma. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, certainly. Um a media finds itself in a, in a very awkward position, I, I can imagine, because uh, as a country, Kenyans do love sensation and they will listen to that. And, uh, but it, for media, I think it's looking beyond the sensation and, and asking the hard questions like what you've said, looking at the demolitions, why now? Why do you have to wait for the buildings to be built some uh, five years on and uh, that's when you decide to, build, uh, to bring down the buildings. How are you b bringing down the buildings? I think right. we've raised several questions about that, the safety of that. Is that the manner? I mean, demolition is a very specialized trade. It's not a matter of a bulldozer, a green monster knocking down the buildings. Um, the safety of persons around the buildings is, is, is questioned. And even if you just drive by in Bagathi uh, and how that building lo looks like and how it's hanging right now, it begs a lot of questions. Has this really been thought out, uh, thought through uh, well? And, 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 and where will this shouldn't there be more order in this okay. uh, uh, I believe uh, alright and in, even as you continue with your contributions on this particular point someone asks this is David Maswili he says uh, the crime could have been committed but the bigger crime is demolishing these developments Kenya can't afford to bring down investments worth he quotes six billion in a day compromises could be reached on allowing the mighty river enjoy its movement while letting the buildings stand. Uh, Constant, I don't know if you're just uh, switching the position of your seat and you really want to respond <laughs> yeah, I would to like, I would like to just uh, make a comment on that. Um, because three years ago, I found myself uh, at around midnight near Nairobi West area trying to rescue a group of school kids who are stuck in a bus, uh, a school bus, yes. the entire night. And uh, because of floods, basically the, the bus got stuck in the middle of floods. And the reason why this bus was stuck in the middle of floods was precisely the is uh, because of these particular issues. Um, that this, in fact, this particular Ngong, Ngong River that passes through Mbagatiwe had been uh, blocked slightly. A number of the uh, riparian area, most of the riparian area uh, in, in, uh, along that river has, <laughs> has been taken over. Uh, I think there is all, we had NHC housing that got flooded that time. And we also had, uh, I think, Nairobi, Nairobi West Mall uh, flooded. We had these school kids stuck in their bus, and I th one person in a vehicle, may, uh, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, lost their life. Their life. On and this, day. you feel, is directly because and, of. And, and this was directly because the of the grabbing of this riparian land. Because the reason why we have this riparian land is not for for its own sake. We don't create laws. And or we don't plan, as uh, the chairman has said, for its own sake. We plan for people. It's for the sake of the protection of people. When people lost their TVs and their furniture and, 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 and even our life was lost there, it was be precisely because we went against these laws. So, so no compromises in your view? They, they should, when when we're, we're looking at human life versus so-called economy, the economy should exist for the people. Okay. The planning is done for the people. And therefore, it, it, uh, we may have made mistakes. Mistakes may have happened in the, in the planning. It's always time to wake up again. Okay. We've seen situations in the West where... Um, over the development of the of, uh, of the last centuries, where cities have had to change the way they uh, plan themselves, the way they plan their environments, because you learn over time, and yes. I think for us it's a learning opportunity, and we take advantage of that now to to move forward. And this is a good turning point that yeah. we find ourselves in. But in terms of rules, regulations, procedures, is there anything to guide the current demolitions? We're told about 4,000 buildings that have been earmarked for this demolition. Are there any procedures and rules? Um, 
Yeah, they're, they're, Kenya does not lack when it comes to rules and regulations. <laughs> and laws. We have them, and we have some of the best laws, okay. some of the best regulations. The problem comes when it comes to implementation. And that's why we've been uh, making mistakes over and over. So the question begs then, um, if nothing is done about plan implementation, what's the point of demolishing the buildings? If tomorrow again we will allocate or give approved building building plans on, mm -hmm. on riparians, isn't it? So I think there is uh, this Nairobi regeneration thing. If 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 they are serious about it, it has to be multi pronged. Okay. Uh, they, 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 they have to educate the public first, and I think it's about time now that uh, information about plans becomes public information. But let's see, oh, let's see how we can uh, jump yes. in on that in terms of media's role in creating awareness. It's never an easy job to break down yeah. the figures and numbers and illustrate this in a way that the reader or the audience would take this in. I mean, as you say, sometimes it might be deemed as boring. Isn't that a challenge in telling these stories? I mean, in this case, I think that um, it would be good to bring a bit more, uh, a bit more solidity, and to try to nail a few details down. So instead of us, you know, hearing that today this building is going down, tomorrow this building is going down, is there not somebody who has the authority? Uh, I mean, who is it who has the authority to release this list? Officially, where does it sit? Who is that person? You say the list of the yes, this, this, this list of this list of buildings to be brought down. This so-called list that we are hearing about from time to time, can't it just be produced by whichever responsible official? And can we not know? Building one is being destroyed because of this reason. Building two is being destroyed because of this reason. All the way for all the buildings, right? So that now we know that. Um, and, and, and so that if, if we are talking about that, we can show even graphically because this is this is a this is a special yes this is a special issue. So if it's on riparian land, it's next to the river. It if you're going to destroy buildings, it's not too much work to show f to to every every person and to the public, mm -hmm. not even just the owner, the public. Here is the building. Here is the river. You're too close, and you should be able to do this for every single building. Okay. Now, now we'd be on more solid ground, and we'd know which law we are implementing, so that we are clear as to as to what is happening. Okay. But let's look at best practice. Is as you were pursuing these stories, is is it information that was easily accessible to you um, in acquiring, so you can tell the story? Uh, it's true that generally this is not information that I mean the the mere fact that it's not out there now hints at the difficulty someone would go through in getting information like okay. this. Um, because you would expect that that this is something that uh, would be routinely published. Um, I know that if I was working uh, in another place, in another city, uh, in the in in you know North America or Europe, this would be a simple matter of an online GIS, mm -hmm. right? Where you would just uh, where you know geographic information system where you could just put you know the layers this is the riparian layer the rivers are here and this is the zoning so these are things that are very easy to find out part of the elsewhere yes <laughs> not here okay um i think and 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 we're going and i think we'll go we'll probably we probably should yes. go into this deeper we need to talk about how difficult it is in this country to access pub planning information for the public. Hang on, it's let's not problem. be too easy on the on the on the trade on the uh, profession of journalism. Yes, yes. Are we lagging on our job then if we're not getting this information out there, or isn't it's not out there in the first place yeah. as journalists? I, I think that um, what what I would, I mean, it, it's definitely our job to go to city hall and ask for it. Yes. Yeah, and not only to ask for it, but to tell our readers that we have been we looking pursue. for this information yes, yes we went to city hall and they refused to give it to us okay we went to we went to you know the nairobi regeneration committee secretariat wherever they happen to be sitting <laughs> and they refused to give it to us yes and then now from there you can talk about um uh how can we try to figure out how to demonstrate this to the public yes if for example we are talking about a particular building okay so what I mean, what I would have done probably is probably gone to something like Google Earth mm -hmm. and see if I can measure the riparian zone, right? 
by meters if it's you know if it's that 6 to 30 yeah. just measure it and see if that if if that coincides with obviously with the aid of a professional because you're not a planner so look for a professional planner try and find out yes. what where, how does this building look on the river try and illustrate at least one so that we can now show this to our readers that this is what the riparian zone for this place looks like practically yeah, yeah. practically Hoping i just that, want to chime yes. in yeah that yes. it's not only difficult for journalists I'll, I'll tell you for a fact it's difficult for professionals it is difficult for planners and architects to access this information mm -hmm. uh, and even to partner with some of these organizations I, I'm, as he's saying there's a lot of you, you, we need a lot of public awareness and yes. we've in the past, at least to some level, I'm happy the county of Nairobi has partnered with us in the past with our public campaigns, one called Jeonam Jengo. Uh, but we've called on these other agencies, and mm. uh, they don't just—they just don't show up. So, in terms of that public awareness, it's—it's—it's—it's it's, 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 it's really hard, like he mm. says, to get the information okay. or to get these agencies to engage with Mwanenshi and explain. So, if the information is locked up somewhere, right. I think it's a, to the benefit of certain people. It has been locked up on purpose almost most of the time. On purpose. So that yeah, so that people. You know, uh, all in right. all that, they can uh, then know how to uh, arm twist and the like. Yeah? All right. Yeah. Edwin Whiter says, uh, uh, Mark, please stop interjecting and let the experts speak. I will after I take <laughs> this break. Um, I mean, this is a show on critiquing, so you're critiquing my work, and I thank you for that, Edwin. Uh, Prince says, at first I thought it was a place, riparian. Uh, kudos to the media. It has explained well enough to uh, the reason of uh, demolition. I'm sorry I'm not expanding these ones, so you can see that yeah, that's what uh, Prince Vince has said. Uh, and we'll take a short break here because we're pressed for time in terms of planning we also plan around time uh, we'll be back shortly see with us <laughs> Well, early in the week, there was as well another strong statement from the president, and he did not mince his words, speaking to the role played by various approving agencies in allowing buildings to be constructed on riparian or public land. We are not just going to punish those who built, because I know in many instances, many of them are claiming they were given permits. But well, those permits and whatever they were given were given illegally, but they were given by government officers. If they participated in granting illegal permits, they will be prosecuted because they are equally as fault to fault as those who built. So nobody will be left behind and we will not accept. Strong statement there from the president and I'll start with uh, some of the institutions that are involved. Uh, First of all, actually, let me start with Vince, Vincent. Is it our place then to call out those who are responsible uh, in an approving system, in the approving system of any construction? In, yes. Or have you seen that story? Yes. I mean, um, one of the things that um, this has brought out is that one of the questions you should ask is, number one, if, if I went and got a building permit, I mean, there are many questions you can ask. One of them is, if you can get a building permit, and the building is destroyed, then what worth is that permit? Yeah. So if, if, that, if, if the work is being done illegally, then we have to think beyond the papers and talk about the procedures and the people. Now, when you talk about the process at City Hall, um, typically what we know is that um, when you when you receive, um, when you go to, when you go to apply, and, and, and this is something uh, my colleagues here will probably know, when you apply for, you know, to, to receive your building permit, yeah. um, the system that works there is not how it used to be. You know, around the late 2000s, it changed a bit, okay? So what used to happen before was that you would have a planning department, okay? And you would apply, and then, you would get um, the, the 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 application would come before a committee of the council, and then they would vote yes no, right? Now we have what is called the planning department's technical committee. Okay, so that means that um, the the county assembly is not approving plans; it's just the planning department. So typically, what will happen is that you'll have planning staff. Okay, so you'll have staff in the planning department and then you're going to have some people also from the private sector 
who are involved in the in the technical committee. And one of the things that um, where we think I think that could there could be more accountability is that we don't know exactly who approves these mm -hmm. these plans, right? We don't we don't know the names. Who are who are these people? And that is at odds with how our society works generally, if you okay. think about it. Because if you went to court, okay, let's say someone sued you or you sued somebody, you went to court. Yes. Don't you think it would be odd if you didn't know the name of the judge or you didn't see him? Don't you think it would be odd if you went to parliament and you don't know who the lawmakers are? Mm. Right? So these are people who are making decisions for the public that affect lots of people. But if I go to the city hall website, there's not a mention of that these are the names of the guys who approve. For yeah. instance, of this one uh, that is South End Mall that's in the, on the screen right I now. I mean, or, or, or the people who just approve any application whatsoever. Okay. Um, and and that's 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 part of you know that's part of the reason that's part of the things that we I, I think need to come out, not just uh, not just the fact that um, not just the fact that there's a particular somebody who issued it, but the fact that how was the decision reached at? Okay, we we don't know anything about that <coughs> process, and whereas. I, as a journalist, can speak to a planner and he'll explain the process to me. It, it, it's not enough to tell me because, in this case, uh, obviously, as the public, uh, we would have wanted to know to for accountability's sake. Yes. Uh, you know who who did these things. Is this an, is the next stage then in telling this story? Perhaps pursuing those responsible. Let's take, for instance, this particular uh, building that mm -hmm. is uh, Southend Mall who's responsible in approving from stage one. And I mean, you're, you're, you're probably, your institute probably has members who would give, um, would be part of the process. Mm -hmm. What's, who's, to, who's to blame here? Yeah. I think, first of all, I think the root of most of our problems in this country is a culture of impunity. So it's everybody. It's not only, uh, it's very easy to point at government, but I think I'm very happy to hear um, the president saying that you hold people to account and government must be held to account also. Uh, and I think you alluded to that, the authenticity of documents given by government. What's, what's the value of a title? What's the value of my passport? Yes. If uh, this whole process last week has proven that it doesn't matter. Uh, and, and if you can't, uh, if there's no sanctity of do uh, documents from, uh, from government, then we're in a very, in a catch-22 as a country. Mm -hmm. But yes, in terms of impunity, I think it's, it's cross-board. It's across private sector, it's across public sector, because one hand is receiving, one hand is giving, but everybody must be held to Would account. Would the Architectural Association of Kenya take mm. responsibility in any part? For instance, this is a UK building. Yes. It's been there for years. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, is there a point where you raised the red flag, or would you take responsibility for such? No, not as an association, of course not, but if we have members yes. who, are, uh, who are part of that, then we have a process uh, in terms of uh, ethics and practice, uh, calling in our members, uh, especially when the public do uh, call them out on certain issues, and we sit through a process of uh, taking them through that and questioning them in terms of their ethics and their practice. So we do have mechanisms, um, as I'm sure other um, uh, um, associations do, to, to check our peers, to ensure that our members are upholding uh, what we stand for as an association. Okay. So yes, we have mechanisms. Right. Uh, but the other thing I think with the Southfield Mall, it has actually it had actually been disapproved. I think then the the, 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 the landlord got a court order. So it's 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 a justice. Uh, I mean, it's um, judiciary. Mm -hmm. It's private sector. It's everybody because at one point the building had actually been uh, stopped because. The, 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 the county government had noticed that they were building on riparian land, okay. which was different from what they right. uh, had been approved. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and as and I'll just let the audience know as they listen in. Uh, besides just tweeting, you can also SMS two zero six eight six and give us your views. We'll be able to sample them. As you can see, some of the tweets there. Uh, we've heard from a. K and uh, they have their procedures as uh, KIP that is the Institute of Planners uh, are there procedures that you would follow in per perhaps pursuing someone who's part of one of these condemned buildings in terms of approving it or in the development process yes uh, I, I first would like to begin by telling the president yes he's lost a few friends <laughs> but he's gained many because okay. part of the fr frustration that uh, professional bodies have been having and also regulatory boards is that they're not able to enforce uh, ethical standards 
the code of conduct because there is too much interference by politicians, the executive, yes. on those processes. The, the judiciary. And, and uh, the case of the judiciary that Emma just mentioned, look, a plan has a legal status. It's yes. a legal document. Once approved, it is binding to all. So what, what the judge needs to ask for is where is the plan for the area? And once he sees the plan, the approved plan, he should then rule based on that, okay. not based on any other document. Otherwise, then we are wasting time. We spend millions and millions of, hundreds of millions of shillings preparing plans. Okay, give us, give us just a breakdown, quick yes. one, just before I bring in uh, Constant Cap. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of who is involved, from the concept point, mm -hmm. who is involved? Let's use, for instance, uh, UK mall. Yes. Who is involved in the concept and approval and what have you, till you see the, the, the building up? So, for instance, the, the, the owner of the, of the plot. Yes. Uh, but even before the owner comes in, there has to have been an allocation of that area to somebody. Okay. And allocations are based on plans. So there is what they call path development plans, which is really bad practice because it's very piecemeal mm -hmm. uh, planning processes. Um, and path development plans have traditionally been used to change the content of plants to redesignate certain lands mm -hmm. to other users. So, for instance, if the area was a riparian, you will find somebody then uh, prepares a smaller plan, which changes the use of that riparian or a section of it into into something else. Mm -hmm. So, I suspect that's what happened with uh, Nakuma 2K with that building because clearly it was just on the river yes. on a, on a riparian. Then. Arising for that, from that then, if someone has a title for the property, uh, he approaches an architect who prepares building plans. Those building plans are then submitted to City Hall, and then City Hall Planning Department is supposed to do due diligence to check whether uh, uh, the, the plans can be approved, and then issue either an approval or not approve those same plans. So in this case, it seems to have been approved. Otherwise, okay. the person will never have built on on that land. So then, uh, then uh, the owners of the land go ahead and and, and, and construct the and building. Engage developers and what yes. have you. And just to okay. add to that, I yeah. think that's one agency, but uh, yeah. the, the more and more we see ourselves yes. having so many agencies yes. that uh, people have to yeah. submit to, which is part of the po problem that you've got uh, many uh, actors and, mm -hmm. and we've been proposing that all this should sort of be yes. condensed or you have one stop shop so that they're talking to each other. Mm -hmm. So you have that plan. Yes. And City Hall has approved it, but you need NEMA approval. NEMA approval. You will need Kura approval, and all these agencies are not talking to each other. Uh, and that's part of, has been the, the duplicity that's of, the of right agencies. Yes. yes. So you have to get a NEMA approval. Um, depending on where your land is, if you're next to Department of Defense, you'll need uh, approval from Department of Defense. You'll need, if you're next to an airport, you'll need yes. uh, approval from. Uh, KCAA uh, and, and the like, and that has been part of the problem, the duplicity of the agencies, and mm -hmm. even in terms of the laws, because they're all applying their own um, uh, their own laws. So that's been part of the problem. That okay. there's, there's there's too much rule, there, there are too many rules and yes. too many agencies uh, with these rules, uh, uh, and 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 I think that's been a major problem. Do you think for you you feel that we've done our job in terms of media naming and shaming? Uh, it's NEMA in this case, or it's the architect in this case. Is that, is that where you feel that we've done justice to the story? Um, honestly, no. I think we can name the institution, but there are people within that, those institutions whose signatures went to these particular uh, developments, and we want to know who, we need to know who they are. I know now I may sound more like an activist than a planner, <laughs> <laughs> but we need to know who they are. Yes. And it's very nice to hear what the president is saying, but when we see people in jail yes. is when we'll be very sure of what's yeah, happening yeah. okay as i said we've seen people losing lives because of uh, buildings coming up that are not uh, don't follow procedure yes we've seen rogue developers going against even guidelines given by by city hall we have seen even uh, in, uh, in very recently even buildings going above certain heights near airports okay we've seen build, uh, buildings that are occupying road reserve until we see the people who are responsible for these approvals or also for monitoring this particular, because remember there are also people within uh, these various government bodies who are mm -hmm. in charge of monitoring and checking that uh, constructions are following are following procedure. Mm -hmm. And uh, w w when we see, you know, buildings of 20 story coming up without a lift, for instance, without uh, emergency fire exits, then we ask ourselves what are they doing? Who is issuing that certificate of occupation? Those are the people we want to see 
behind bars. Right. Then, then we will. And where does media come in? Again, as we said, we've not seen really concrete investigative journalism into the built environment. We've it's seen after after the fact, after a tragedy. Yeah. yeah, after a tragedy, then you get uh, you know a, a few questions being asked. You know, who is responsible at City Hall? Who is responsible maybe at NEMA? Who is responsible wherever? But we've not seen an attempt, for instance, by media similar to some of the things we've seen with with the police or with the uh, City Council Lascaris, where media actually goes in and pretends to be players and 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 up stories we've not seen media and nothing stories mm -hmm. like that among all these various authorities leading to uh, and and you see planning is such a, a critical aspect of urban life. development mm -hmm. i mean it, it, actually life as, as, as uh, the president is saying um it's such a critical part and when we ignore it you know for instance i'll, I'll give you a very good example mm -hmm. nairobi county passed their budget uh, last month they have allocated less money for the urban planning department than even trade and tourism wow. okay no one has reported it no one has said anything about it yes. yet they've only allocated um, money for two local area plans which would be you know maybe ward uh, mm. special plans for ward for wards yet this is something that is urgent mm. with the, the rate at which the city is growing we would expect them to say at least 50 wards you know to get uh, residents associations involved to get professional bodies involved in in all of this we, we, we don't see any, any transparency from the part of the, of, of the authorities. Okay. Media can come and demand for that transparency, for right. that accountability, and okay. also drive for that participation of people. Because at the end of the day, planning is not, it, it's not about, um, the city is not about government. It's not about, uh, you know, one or two special people. It is about the peop every single, single citizen. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. On that point, uh, we'll take another break. I have to take another break. And... Uh, Look at Certified Savage. You say, while unanimously supporting the, uh, we support the demolition of illegally erected structures or riparian land, buzzword, there needs to be awareness by NEMA regarding the same plus hasty prosecutions of government officials who approved the erection of the structures brought down. And in this last part of the program, we'll be looking at how to push this story forward, looking at what we can, the themes that we can be pursuing because there are other buildings that are meant to come down. And we can question whether the demolitions going on right now are actually demolitions as per the term itself because the structures are still standing. It's just a bit uh, of... Uh, uh, you know, compromise here and there. A lot of questions to still answer after the break. Let's continue. Uh, first of all, uh, it's fairly, you say, very insightful discussion on legal processes. I have to move <laughs> my TV and continue watching uh, from a riparian land, you say. <laughs> And after that, I think now it actually doesn't exist. Gavara, <clears throat> you pose a question here and you say, alternative to what? I'm asking whether there is a plan beyond the demolitions. We keep being told of regeneration, but it doesn't seem like there is actually a plan or even a vision for that. Another question is whether demolitions are the only options we have, something that we can uh, jot down and respond to. As we also listen to the concerns raised by Kiambu Governor Ferdinand Waititu over the demolitions. Kama mutu ambaya mekua na historia ya Nairobi. Mimi Nairobi pale, ni melelewa pale. Na ni mekua deputy governor wa Nairobi. Mambo ikina mi naona pale, kama hiyo watu wana support ya ubomuaji, mimi yapana support. Mambo iangaliwe kama kuna nyumba yako inakaribiana na muto wewe uambiwe ni gharama yako kuhakikisha hiyo mtu imesonga kidogo lakini kupumua nyumba is not a solution honestly speaking it's such a big loss I think this is uh, you'd want to respond to this first of all Daktari <coughs> on uh, his concerns are there issues that we should question there and, and challenge uh, I'm, I'm very glad that you played that clip because uh, as opposed to what people think, Governor Itito speaks for a very huge constituency. Of, of, um, and incidentally, uh, we planners say he is Baba Yetu. And the reason why, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll explain. He is the one in charge of urban planning and develop and, and uh, land, land, land and land. urban planning at this Council of Governors. Yes. He's actually the chairman of, 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 of that uh, unit. Yes. Now, 
meaning then that we engage with him on a, on a regular basis. And what I've come to realize is that we, we, we don't seem to be able to communicate to the common man very well when it comes to planning. Very elitist. And hence, we are very elitist. And planning has tended to be elitist. Actually, it's part of the problems we have, why people invade riparian areas and establish slums, why they I I invade the streets and, and do business on the streets, is because our plans are not responsive uh, to, to the common monarchy. Yes. And I think he speaks for many when he says it is a very painful process. And I, I would like us to shift the focus from Nakumatuke to Kibera, the demolitions in Kibera. Because it seems like when, when we cover the Kibera case, we, we have a more human, uh, we put a more human face to it and, mm -hmm. and, and say, no, it's unfair, people are really suffering. And I then believe we, you have some of the pictures. When we co cover Nakumat, okay, there is almost a lynch party. We, 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 we cheer on and say, yes, do it, do it. Right. But I think uh, planning is not an en enemy of the people. Plans are supposed, by the way, plans are developed in consultation with the people. And the constitution is very clear now that you cannot do a plan without consulting people mm. extensively. So the plan you prepare, the plan you make, becomes the plan of the people. Okay. They endorse it and then they adopt it and carry it on. Uh, part of what we are having, we are seeing uh, uh, since the post-independent era is a challenge to the colonial planning frames, which as you know, we did not plan for ourselves. Those plans were prepared to protect a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. And we should have gotten into a debate of how do we retrofit our plans so that they are responsive to our African population. Okay. Most of whom just want a place to trade they want a place to live. Kibera does not exist because people are just naughty and, uh, and annoying and want to break the rules. No, it is because we are not accommodating them in the city. So you're saying we're working with blueprints from back in the day. Yes, we have some very, pictures here of uh, Nairobi from, the, I believe it's the 70s and 80s that my yes. producer managed to yes, get. Yes. <clears throat> right now we're operating with those plans. Is that what you're saying? Yes. To some extent, like the the, the, the riparians are, are as a result of the 1948 plan for for Nairobi, which allocated huge riparians uh, in the city. I agree, they needed to be huge, partly because we are on the foothills of the Abadeas, so the the, the the rains come down very hard on us, and because land has been cleared upstream, which was forested. Yes. The 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 the. the the speed at which water comes down the slope is much higher, mm -hmm. and therefore we, we needed to have preserved those riparians. However, there's it's, uh, yes. plans from that colonial era that we need to relook and see how we can be more responsive to our people in the present. It is very sad that we have about 70% of the population of Nairobi living in slums, mm -hmm. and nobody's talking about it. Nobody's saying, how do we accommodate these people? Yet a very small on profit riparian. on riparians, yes. because that's the only place that was available. Mm. The plans did not see that there will be people earning less than 10,000 a, a month. They saw people who were earning 50,000 and above and allocated land for that. So what they call a low income residential area really is not for low income. It's, okay. it's for middle income and above. So we've left out that huge segment of the population out. So anyway, what I am saying is, uh, the demolitions need to be more human if we listen to it too. What he's simply saying is that can we have a discussion about this? And that's where the media comes in because you can lead us in this. You can, you can, you brought out the views of the people. You saw what they are saying. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of misunderstanding about riparians. Why now? It is the first time we are hearing this huge word. We haven't even understood what it is. And uh, it is a brutal way to educate the public. But I think there are softer ways to educate the public. And the Constitution, as it is now, protects the rights of people. All and right. I think we should be very And the pictures that. that you see there, courtesy of our, our Daily Nation library, thanks to them for that. Vincent, to what he says, and as we respond to what you've heard from mm -hmm. uh, Buono so we shouldn't just either post it as a ridiculous comment as has been in social, on social media. How can, he, uh, how can he dare say this? given his position, mm -hmm. but we should actually give some voice to that uh, kind of concern. No, well, I think, of course, you have to take it seriously. But even when you take it seriously, it doesn't, I think, it doesn't have, it doesn't increase the planning merit that it, that, that position has. Yes. Uh, because um, when he talks about the fact that 
and, and, and this is very serious. Like, like you said, you know, Ferdinand Waititu was a deputy governor of Nairobi, a deputy mayor yeah. of Nairobi. So that's not idle talk. Yeah, it's not what someone else will say. I mean, this is somebody who has been at the forefront of implementing these things. Yes. The, the problem here is that here we have a law that says don't build next to the river. So someone has come with the means to hire lawyers and architects and draft that plan and decides, I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to build it next to the river just because. I can. Yeah, just because I can. And I think that um, it's, it's, I think it's, it's not helpful in such a situation when somebody knew that this was against the law and went against it, you know, for us to then begin to say it was a loss. Yeah, fine, it's a loss, but you'd not have incurred that loss had you followed the law. Right. Yeah. And I think to make the, um, to make the point clear, because I think when we talk about plans and wetlands, I think what probably journalists would need to bring home in this is the whole reason why these wetlands are important. Um, as we urbanize, one of the things that we, are going, that we see happening all the time is that we are paving over wetland. One of, these, one of the areas that, one of the most important functions that rivers play and that wetlands play with the whole water cycle is the fact that they allow for percolation of rainwater into underground water supply, the aquifers. And that is impeded when urban development comes and you pave over you know, these surfaces. Right. So it, it becomes a real problem that the rain has nowhere to go. And so you know, it, that may not be a problem when there's no water, but when you do it over enough, a, a big enough area, and you know, the water here doesn't have a place to go and there and there and there, it, it all comes together. Yes. And so the question is, uh, that, that is one thing that has to be made clear. Uh, in environmental sciences, they say that everyone lives downstream. At some point, it, something you do affects everybody and the yes. effect grows. So we, we can't be thinking in isolation. Okay. Uh, we can't be thinking about best and highest use of property and how much money I'm going to make from my real estate project because it's not the only thing you can, uh, it's not the only thing that matters. Um, and I think that what, what we have not seen yet, and I think going forward the bigger problem that we are going to have to solve is how do our systems work so that we don't need a regeneration committee. You know, the fact that there's a regeneration committee means that the systems that should be working every day have failed. That's what it means. Mm. And how do we approve plans, right? What is the process uh, so that when we go through this process, you know, we do not, because we can talk about corruption, but remember that it is human nature to be corrupt, yes. right? Even in cities where we don't have this kind of thing happening, like, I was reading a, a, a story about 2016, I believe, where in the city of New York, they arrested around 60 building inspectors for taking bribes. So they, these people were taking bribes to issue building permits. So even in big advanced cities, these things are a problem. Right. The only problem is they are vigilant and they watch over them. Okay. Um, I'd, I'd just like to give an opportunity also to Emma and uh, Constant Cap just to respond to what they've heard there from OIT2 and the leaders. Is it a concern that we should uh, actually put out there in terms of, yes, the president is talking tough mm -hmm. and the buildings will go down, mm -hmm. but there's then the need for a conversation as to how we're doing this. Is that something we should promote as media? Uh, absolutely, because uh, in some of these cases, the landlord or uh, developer is far gone from the scene. Uh, you have third, second, gener uh, second generation owners, be it people who've purchased apartments uh, in Kelaleshwa, mm. uh, had no idea. Banks gave them loans on those uh, apartments on the basis of government documents. And it really begs a question, again, like I had said uh, before, what's the sanctity and um, uh, and authenticity of government documents. Mm. Um, so there, there, are, there are people who are really, really suffering and the culprit is, uh, has left the scene. Uh, you have got tenants who uh, put up and fit, um, manage, uh, for example, even in Southfield, you've got people who had done a, a elaborate um, fit outs in, in, in that building, and now all that is gone. So, yes, we, can, we shouldn't be celebrating per se. I mean, it's 
uh, like Dr. Esho said, mm -hmm. it's it's actually very brutal. It's a yes. brutal way of doing it. It could have. Uh, I think uh, that we got to this point is sad, and we must not forget that uh, that we should not repeat this. We should not get to this point again. I think you had asked something before in terms of media and uh, how the conversation should uh, move on from here, because this is not the only thing. I think. Um, uh, for me, I've never got as many calls from uh, media houses as I have over the last week, uh, uh, and it was in riparian, but I've, we've had buildings collapsing and 50 people uh, dying, and I, may, I, I never got a call from a media house. And yes. I, I, I'm wondering, you know, uh, uh, it made me question a little bit um, that the media, in terms of uh, priority, have, had we got too used to collapsing buildings on their own, and now yes. this is a new thing, and it's more sensation, uh, sensational. Um, even as we speak, there are about 820, 800 buildings that are structurally unsound and are, waiting, are going to collapse. Many of them on riparian, actually, <laughs> so wow. that's where the two come up. Illegal structures, not put up with approval, but sitting there, and no, 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 no... No media house has picked up on that. Okay, we um, pick it up yes. when there's when it go, when it when comes, it comes down. down. And and now nowadays not not anymore. In fact, I was just t telling you earlier how uh, there's a tree that fell on cars at on the Serena car park, and I think a day before a building had come down in 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 in, in Juja, mm -hmm. and that made more news on social media amongst Kenyans and on media houses than the building coming down and those uh, uh, you know fatalities and that. So maybe it's media, but maybe it's media so, uh, responding to what our society has become yes. and it might be just a point of time we might become numb to the demolitions and uh, life will go on. Speaking yeah? of which, mm. is what we're terming as demolition really the demolition as it's meant to be? Is it a question that we uh, have been asking or should we be asking this moving forward? It's going to continue. Having looked at uh, a floor falling on a bulldozer, on, a, on, on that uh, green, <laughs> green machine, <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> yeah, on the monster, on uh, was it Friday? Then that question has actually come up within various forums. Yes. You know? Is it that we're just going to do it uh, brutally without actually consulting professionals, uh, structural engineers and the likes on how this building should be brought down? Mm -hmm. and, and we saw it. We just saw at Nakumat UK the building uh, coming down. Yes. Um, bringing down a four-story building is not the same as bringing down uh, an informal settlement, you know, where you just come and um, you know, remove everything and, and, and it's cleared. So that 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 definitely has to be is, is, is something that needs to be to be raised, even for the safety of those people involved in demolitions. those those demolitions. Because even now, as we're speaking with you, um, on Saturday we uh, we drove past uh, Bagathi and we saw people trying to sneak into this uh, this building that's now half yeah. demolished, trying yeah. to steal you know a window, mm -hmm. uh, a few bricks, a few pieces of metal, you know and. It, this thing could fall on them. Yeah, okay. this, the buildings yeah. need to be hoarded properly yeah. right now. Yeah. Yes. It shouldn't be easy to access because they yeah. could they could come down. Is so it meant to come down, kabisa, completely? Like there's nothing standing on those on those sites. Is I that the demolition as it's meant to be? Absolutely, yeah. and clear that debris because yeah. if it's going to go yeah. back into the river, then what was the whole point? Uh, and and I think we've been talking about this in terms of w what next, what next? Uh, after the demolition. And I think Avara has uh, yes. even questioned that. What's where's the regeneration in this? It's not only demolition. Where, how, where, where are the plans to convert this into um, parks and, and, right. and green areas? Uh, otherwise, it'll just be uh, cyclic. All they'll become... More uh, destruction. Yes, yes. yes. And because this was actually he echoed by Herbert uh, Mwachiro, president of Environment Institute of Kenya, who said that they have concerns. I mean, there's meant to be a decommissioning pros procedure to follow mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you'd want us to pursue as media? And this is as we conclude on what you, and whatever else you'd want to put out there as a challenge to media. I think what I would want media to do is to allow uh, different voices to speak on the matter okay, and, and interrogate as media is supposed to do uh, so that we get the full story um, of all the angles, the question of approvals, what happened there, the question of how it should be done as you've just asked, how should demolitions be done? Is this the legal way of doing it? Mm -hmm. Are we following the, 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 the rule of the law? And also to speak to, to, to politicians on this matter, that they are also culpable. The, 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 let me put it this way. The, we cannot bury our heads in the sand as professionals. Neither can government bury its head in the sand. Yes. Uh, as much as people are cheering the demolition, there are also third parties who are suffering. 
who are not party to the whole corruption deal or impunity. Mm -hmm. They just found themselves as victims. So we need to interrogate further and give uh, give voice to the voiceless. I think that you'll have done as a big uh, favor. Yes, but someone says, uh, you know, um, for instance, if the NEMA gave the uh, warning that will be coming to bring it down, is that enough in this process of demolition? And, and, and these warnings were given to landlords and the developers. And some of them withheld them from the from the tenants. It's known because it so immediately you would have vacated and asked yes. for your deposit back and the like. And right. uh, some of these um, landlords held back these from from their tenants. There were rumors and they were going and saying, no, everything is fine. Um, so there's a lot of question there in terms of what could have been done better to protect you know uh, innocent third parties. And yeah. your last call to media. I mean, you're always in many cases trying to get our attention. And now we're trying to get your attention yes. at this time. Yes. Uh, what's your call to media? Yeah, d first of all, to, to I, I've been many times. In fact, we have a, a, a wonderful campaign we do every year called Jena Umjengo, Unamjengo, trying to educate the public on matters, um, um, matters construction, matters yes. planning. And we've called on media houses, and they tell you oh, to uh, appear on the breakfast show. Give us this much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't uh, have to give me anything. Uh, no, 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 yeah. no. <laughs> just to say, that, just to clarify, I, I'm, yes. I'm here by invitation of <laughs> Mark, you. which is great. But we need to be having these wholesome conversations a lot more about uh, uh, and just being very, very deliberate as media as media houses on 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 on, on educating the public on on when having a segment maybe on on this. Kenyans are passionate about building. Everybody, uh, everybody wants a piece of land. Everyone wants to put up a building. Can we just be more deliberate about this, you know, pub, uh, public awareness? Yes. And I think buildings impact so much on people's lives um, that uh, it's important for media to 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 focus on this a little. Do bit we have more. your commitment as the Architectural uh, Association of Kenya president that mm. if any architect is found to have been part of, uh, you know, approving, coming up with the designs for these buildings that are coming down, that mm. you would take action? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. If it is our member, yes, we yes. will. Mm. KIP? No, we will take action on our members. All right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Vincent, if you were to come back to the newsroom, um, what would be your first priority this coming week, going into this week? Demolitions are continuing. Well, okay. First, there's a very big issue that we needed to note. And, and this has been running through all the stories. And we have to really question uh, whether the city of Nairobi, the Nairobi County government, uh, look at its capacity to do some of these things. Mm -hmm. And I think that many times prior, when we talk about the city of Nairobi, what people have said is, oh, the private sector can come in, or oh, the private sector can help. Um, but I think we need to seriously look about building Nairobi's own capacity. I was, I was reading the County Integrated Development Plan, I believe, the most recent one, and, and the figures are shocking. This is what they said. This is on the planning sector alone. Okay. Okay. There is a mismatch between workload and post-technical capacity. Okay. The bulk of the staff is on the lower cadre. Okay. Um, so clerical and support staff with a total staff of 195. So this is the planning department, 195, only 48 are technical, okay, including draftsmen, and that's 24% against an estimated demand of 380 with about 180 technical capacity. So this is in their own report, they're saying we don't have enough people. Uh, when I wrote a story about this in uh, 2015, I found out that they had only one car, one vehicle to inspect buildings across the entire city. Okay. okay? Uh, so, there's a big capacity problem, and I think we need to talk about how we can increase the capacity of Nairobi to, to plan, to inspect geographic information systems. We yes. need to see that uh, so that we, we have enough people building. How do we deploy technology so that when a building inspector comes to your place, you know, he's using technology to take photos, relay back to a central database so that you know what's happening. Okay. Um, so we need to be able to invest in all these things and so it's not uh, it, it, it's it's not just sometimes for the private sector to come and help us with services and the reason i'm saying this is because we in the past in the past 3 or 4 years there was a move uh, a foot being discussed about outsourcing building inspection to the private sector 
I think you people may have heard about it. And we have to ask whether that is something the private sector should be doing and whether we, should be not, whether we shouldn't be concerned that Nairobi cannot do its own building inspection. I think it's not an opportunity for the private sector. I think mm -hmm. it's for something that we should all get very concerned about because they should be able to do it. Right. If bigger cities are doing it, why can't we do it? I remember during the... During the uh, UN Habitat uh, UN Habitat Governing Council, the 25th Governing Council in 2015 that the president opened, I spoke with a planner from Johannesburg who was here to attend it, and he was he was incredulous that building inspection would be done by the private sector. He said, we will never think of that. In Johannesburg, we would never think of that. Yeah. We also have budget constraints. We also suffer with money. But never in the world would we outsource building inspection to the private sector. So we have to think about, if they don't have resources, let's think about how to get them those resources to, yeah. so that we can actually do some of these vital things for ourselves. And Dr. you can, as you, as you give your last comment, you actually gave your last comment, but I'll give it to you out of respect. <laughs> and then cap really quick, because I'm under pressure for time. I and think someone what is saying here, someone yes. is saying here, yeah. I think my producer <clears throat> concern is Zimmerman, and I have many friends who live in Zimmerman, that it has been built on, you know, swampy area and, and it shouldn't have been in the first place. Yeah. Is, is, it, is the point then to start looking for areas to report on so that they can be brought down? Is that the point? Is that what you'd want to see? Uh, the, the, the problem is not that Zimmerman has been built. The problem is the process that led to Zimmerman being built in the first place. Yes. And that's where you need to focus on. That whole approval process, that whole issue that has just been raised about capacity, and it doesn't apply to Nairobi only. In fact, Nairobi is doing pretty well compared to many other towns okay. and many other counties. So there needs to be built enough technical capacity in the counties to be able to inspect the buildings, to be able to uh, implement these plans. However, uh, part, part of the problem on the financial side of things, because inspections have to be done, mm -hmm. most, most <coughs> of these buildings, like we have what we call a certificate of compliance, NEMA was, the Director General of NEMA was saying that when they approve, when they give permission, they give conditions. Someone has to go in there at various points to inspect and stop, gi gi give an enforcement order early enough so that uh, corrective action can be, can be instituted. Right. And that has not been possible because of that uh, non-resourcing uh, of planning departments. And resourcing of NEMA itself, the, just the other day, I think last year, the president uh, removed all the fees charged by NEMA for plan approvals. That was the money they were relying on to do inspections. And then you know government doesn't give uh, departments enough money to do, to do the work. So if I, I understand where it's coming from in the sense that if I'm paying to NEMA, then NEMA, uh, there's a conflict of interest there. But government as a regulator then should allocate enough money because these people are paying taxes anyway. Okay. So there's a lot of money generated through the building process yes. that uh, government should actually fund these agencies. And I want just to return to what Emma was saying. These agencies also need to be talking to each other. Right. Because NEMA, NEMA cannot, the planning department cannot give an approval or an occupation certificate where NEMA has clearly said, uh, set back your building 10 meters away okay. from the bank of the river. Okay. So they need to, we need to have one, uh, to, to collapse all these agencies, perhaps into one very powerful body, and then give the technocrats the freedom to do their work. The reason why Cape Town or South Africa is powerful, even the UK, if you go to the UK, the planners, when they come and say no, they are dreaded because they go by the plans, they go by the rules, yes. and it's for your own benefit. But here we have a situation whereby people dread politicians more than they dread the technocrats. <laughs> and there's too much political interference yes. in technocratic work. Right. So I think we need a, a, a significant measure of autonomy for the planning department or for NEMA for that matter. No, NEMA is already autonomous because it's an authority. Okay. But the planning departments of counties need to have autonomy so that they can be more effective in enforcing plans. We're getting into the riparian uh, zone of this discussion because we're past <laughs> our time. Um, for you, Constant, beyond the green uh, bulldozers, then what uh, story do you want to hear? No, we want to know about the, the three key things we need to get we, we need to get to here. First is, of course, we need uh, the drive for transparency. Okay. And the media can help with that, that transparency. Second is accountability. 
okay, who is accountable to us, as we've, as we've said earlier on. The other aspect that's important, which gets skipped a lot, is participation. Okay, We've talked about technical committees approving. In some cities, um, the proposed plans are all listed on a public display board for everyone to see. Or even, or even websites for, for neighbors to see. Um, that doesn't happen here. In fact, I know several uh, neighborhood associations who are actually trying to fight against certain developments. You're told 17 stories coming here, 10 stories coming here. Um, somebody's putting it next to next to a, a river, next to an airport, etc., etc. Um, we've seen a lot of that. Media has also been very quiet over the Ndungu Commission report, and I have to to mention that the media has not investigated it. They've not brought out. It, it's a public it's a public document. We've not seen the media saying this piece of land was county housing, now we have flats here or this. Um, in fact, it's interesting that in the, in the report there's even someone who has a title of part of a highway. You know, even, even reporting something like that, you know, yes. uh, has, has not come out. Okay. There are also other stories that come with some of these demolitions. For instance, the Kibera demolitions led to a rise in rents in many of the informal settlements. Mm. That story hasn't come out. I know people who are, whose employees are asking for pay rises now because rents have gone up. There are lots of complaints of people who live along the river, right from uh, parts of uh, satellites to mm. Kilimani, Kilaleshwa, because of the stench of some of these rivers. People have to even seal their, their windows. Those stories are not really coming out. So people, they are, you find many people don't even understand the bigger reason mm. why we have to get into what, what we're, we're doing now. Thank you so much for your thoughts, uh, Constant Cap, Dr. Lawrence uh, Esho, and Emma Miloyo for your thoughts as well as Vincent. This is a conversation that continues. I saw when you mentioned doing a report, you wanted to start again. But yes, this is, <laughs> this is something that won't stop. It's a focus that we'll give, and hopefully uh, we have given some themes that we can follow. Uh, something real quick here. Someone says, my wife thought the riparian was a windy whose land was grabbed <laughs> and was reclaiming it. This is via SMS. How about buildings on road reserves like Taj Mall on outside road it should be demolished as well to allow the road to be uh, built please tell us about the narrative that there are towns that have been built on rivers like Thames so building on river is not necessarily very strange or lunga agutu and uh, this is something you can quickly say speak to um, uh, as as someone in the architectural world yes yes, yes. Uh, and i think we all uh, uh, it had even been touched on earlier that um, cities are unique in their location yes. and the and the like and uh, part of the reason uh, i think dr Escher gave that background uh, the triparian land is very unique to a city and yes. the dynamics around that city, <laughs> uh, and there's a there's a science behind that. So it's not that. just about the water yes, body. Yes, yes. Okay. You might find that London is a flat area. Yes. The, the the river is very slow. It won't flood beyond a certain amount. Right. So the it, rivers it, were the highways. Yes, in the past. yes. yes. So and right. the rivers were the highways actually, yeah. okay. Venice and the like. Yes. So uh, different scenario, different uh, uh, setting. Yeah, but certainly a, a great challenge. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, uh, for your discussion thoughts and uh, themes. Now we get into something uh, that will be hopefully a weekly feature uh, I told you we'll be engaging Africa check with uh, fact checking and uh, fake news uh, uh, issues and I just want to put you on the spot to commit that you would be able to work together I say yes uh, it's not too it's not too confident <laughs> say yes okay thank you Nyade, for that he he nods yes you didn't see that but he nods yes and we'll be engaging in the weeks to come on to our international radar and this is something that's important let's look at that